Let's get some analysis from Kalechi Egwim, who's an activist and a volunteer. He joins me from Seabrook in Maryland. Kalechi, good to have you on the program with us. What do you make of this decision not to charge any of the officers for the death of Breonna Taylor? Do you see this as a miscarriage of justice? Well, it, it's a system, unfortunately, working as it's designed to. Um, unfortunately, the American system does not hold police accountable. Is designed for them to be above the law as, as they uh, pretend to actually be the law themselves. But it is actually the way the system is designed. Um, the police, uh, uh, for the most part, have something they call qualified immunity and uh, sovereign immunity from prosecution, which means that even if they kill someone while they're on duty, even if it's their fault, even if they were negligent, even if they were uh, just careless and, and, and wanton, they can't be charged for murder. It's essentially a license to kill. Mm -hmm. And that's the law in this country. So it's, it's the, unfortunately, it is a system working as a design. Mm -hmm. So what needs to happen to the system to change it? Well, uh, there needs to be a, a change of laws. I mean, you need to essentially... Uh, rethink and, and uh, reconstruct the police as an entity. Right now, um, you don't have, you don't even have a mandatory reporting of death and shoot shootings. The police do not have to keep track of how many people they kill, let alone how many black people they kill. And there is no federal agency or entity that collects that information. So we actually have no idea how many people, how many black people in particular, and brown people are being killed by the police because they're not even required to keep that record. And that just seems like a really basic thing. So you really have to get the fundamentals. You need to have mandatory independent criticism uh, or report um, boards that will have subpoena power to investigate police. You have this uh, attorney general um, in, 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 in Kentucky who, unfortunately, I believe, was put in charge of this case because he has a black face. Mm -hmm. And they feel as if, well, if a black man says the police are okay, then black people are somehow going to be less um, upset. Of course, that's nonsense because, you know, Clarence Thomas is a black man. And, 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 and just because you're black doesn't mean you're for black people. He's clearly being used as a tool to maintain a system. We need to, we need to end this qualified immunity police. We need to make sure that uh, uh, the police are no longer being used uh, in situations where they don't belong there. Like when you have mental health issues and, right. and sometimes health issues, the police are called. When somebody's having a heart attack, what's the police officer supposed to do there? Mm -hmm. and, and oftentimes people will die because police shoot them when they have medical emergencies. Mm -hmm. So we need to abolish all, all forms of past bail the problems in the system are known. As a matter of fact, there was a, a, a law that was passed in the Congress, but unfortunately did not move to the Senate and, and would never be found by this president, which would begin to address many of these issues. But the problem is the politicians really don't want to address the issue. They, they somehow wish it will go away, but right. it's not going to go away. It only gets worse. Right, and we have been seeing these protests going on for months now since the killing of George Floyd uh, in May in Minneapolis. Do you think that um, anything has changed since then? Uh, and where do you see the issue of police brutality in America now as we watch these new protests break out? It hasn't changed since then. It hasn't changed since Trayvon Martin when the Black Lives Matter Black Lives Matter movement started. It certainly hasn't changed since Eric Gardner. You can go as far back as Amadou Diallo in the 80s. This is this is a long-standing issue. A black man, woman, or child is killed by the police every 28 hours in America. That's been like that. And unfortunately, there's nothing that I see coming that's going to change that because the police were designed as initially as slave catchers. That's how the, the police uh, in, in America were initially incepted to catch you know, Africans who had the audacity to run away 
from their would-be masters. And it's that same mentality that makes the police come into communities and feel as if they're not there to serve the citizens, but they're there to to uh, to uh, to uh, uh, um, oppress them with their power and, and, and make sure that the laws around uh, those jurisdictions will protect police no matter what they do to the system. So until there's a fundamental change as to what police are, and, 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 you know, the, the police are militarized. You can't even tell the difference between a police officer and a National Guard many times, or even a, a regular military, because mm. they wear the same armament, uniform. I mean, they, they, they come to, to, you know, any situation, even even simple family disputes, you know, with, with, with their assault weapons drawn. This is a mentality that's deep, that's deep shit in the police, which is the reason why, unfortunately, I believe the police departments in most of this country are infiltrated by people who want to do harm to black mm-hmm. people, uh, who wants to do harm to brown people. You know, there was a call put out at some point by a white supremacist a group that the only way to control the black population in America is to get jobs in these urban police departments. Mm-hmm. And they've done that. And, and, and you, you'll see a police a police force where the city can be 60% or in some cases 70% black. But you'll have a police force that's 90% white. Okay. And you wonder how can that be? Yet they, they take the resources from those communities because those communities are paying for their jobs and they take those same resources and they live in outside white communities and, and, and enrich their communities with the with the measly okay. resources of the community that's paying them. This is a structure that maintains the system. And until politicians are forced to actually be held accountable, this will continue. Okay, we're going to leave it there for now. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us, Kalechi Egwim. Thank you.